How you been, man? How's it yeah, going? Yeah, I've been, I've been really good. Great to have you back on here, man, and good to see you. And uh, excited for everything going on in in Yes World and and uh, the new record, of Mirror to the Thank Sky, you. which comes up May nineteenth. For anybody that's been under a rock and and not on <laughs> not online and seeing things, um, you have to be excited about a new album coming out. I got so soon, really, after the last one, which is great. Yeah, we've hardly been able to like settle and enjoy the the quest um and here we are off and running again so it is it's really exciting to have two albums you know the and and i think what 2014 was heaven and earth so that's been quite a while and now we've got two albums we're actually working on a third as well (laughs) well you know you guys are gonna end up being called prolific again uh yeah you're going back to the days now like the band was in the seventies releasing, you know, album, two, two albums a year sometimes, um, yeah. which is, which is wild. So, uh, you know, take us back a little bit. Um, the quest, which was also a great record. And I love that one from, from just a, what, a little over a year ago. Um, when did you guys plan on doing another one? Was it at the time that you had already said, Hey, this is going well, let's, let's keep it going soon. Or, or when did you end up deciding this? Yeah, I mean, um, to be perfectly honest with you, we already had some material, some outtakes from the Heaven and Earth album, stuff that Steve and I had put together at his home studio down in southwest England in Devon. Mm -hmm. Um, And it never really made the light of day, but we made a firm resolve to one another that we would look at those ideas again. And we were well within the, the mixing stage for the quest, um, and remember the condition of the world at the time, we were all still reeling from the pandemic. Yeah. And we didn't want to see the album work uh, finish because it's what kept us artistically stimulated. If we couldn't tour, we could at least be creative. Um, so Steve looked at me one day in those final quest mixing days and said, let's keep it going. And let's look at those earlier ideas from heaven and earth. And those are really um, some signposts or islands that sort of lay out the design of the title track, Mirror to the Sky. Yeah, and I definitely want to talk about that song as well. That's, that's definitely a highlight. Um, but, you know, there's definitely, it, it sounds like yes in, in what you guys do. Obviously, your voice, the instruments, you know, Steve's unique playing, all of that. But, but this album is is a little bit different than even the quest. I think musically, it, it seems a, even more adventurous. I think um, you guys go in a few different places with, with some stuff that you haven't done the last few albums. Was, was there yeah. a, a, a deliberate um, approach going into this one? We didn't do that last time. Let's try this, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. I think there were several factors, contributing factors. One right off the bat was that Thomas Waber at inside out said, let's really do an an energetic album that harkens back to more of the seventies era with snappier tempos and, you know, a rockier album essentially. So that sort of pointed us in a direction. Of course, the band loved doing that. And also, you know, when you think about what the fans have always asked for is this kind of record. Right. And in a way it's dedicated to all of them in that, in that spirit that they've always had, keeping Yes Music alive and, and relevant in their hearts. Um, and then, let's see, we just uh, took off and wanted to, I think another thing to remember is that just like the fans, the band, we've always wanted to, to do more of a, a full length side type of song. Yeah. And this was the perfect time to do it. We had the time, we had the creative enthusiasm we had the support from Inside Out, um, and we actually ended up with more than uh, one long song. We have several long songs, Indeed. I think, that are you know aiming to please any hearty prog rock fan. <laughs> well, it's funny how that works, right? I mean, even myself, you you always you, you go immediately to the track listing, and, and then the minute you see something that's like fifteen minutes, you're like, oh, well that should be good and (laughs) you just assume because the song is long it's going to be good um but uh but in fact you know this one is let's let's talk about that one a little bit the title track it's uh, somewhere around 15 minutes i want to say something like that Um, yes 
it's just really cool. First of all, that guitar riff that starts the song is really killer. And uh, right. and then I like all the directions the song goes, but then the build up at the end with the big orchestration oh yeah it's just so next level it sounds like the ending of a of a big movie or something i mean talk about how that came together and your experience listening to it you know when you finally got it done yeah that the orchestrations came a bit later on um what we had to start with was those early ideas that i mentioned yeah. and um like the guitar intro, which is something I remember I loved hearing when Steve played the demo to me for the first time. And I created some chords underneath it and a bass line, and we sort of left it at that. But we knew that was a great start. And it goes into something that he had in his creative archives, a very sort of rockier instrumental thing that that uh, I felt didn't need any vocal it was great just having, you know, it really fleshed out the song, I think, to have that. And there's another more ambient section that later happens that was an instrumental offering of Steve's. Again, all to flesh out the song and make it longer. But what we had vocally was not much. We had um, his line, repeating line, uh, Dreams of a Sky Without Fire. And that was really nice. And I knew I wanted to create some lyrical vocal sort of islands that would or you know that would help glue those longer instrumental sections together and uh, interestingly enough i had just finished working with steve for a while and i was down in brighton with my fiance emily and we were walking along the seaside and it was such a beautiful day i remember and the sea was unusually placid that day and she exclaimed look at this ocean it's so pretty today it's like a mirror to the sky hmm. and i thought aha that's it <laughs> that's a great yeah, that's a great it's a great yeah line. yeah how was i going to branch off of steve's idea sky without fire and that was it and then um of course being so excited with that idea i came home after that trip to brighton and picked up the guitar and along with the other um sections that i wrote instrumentally and vocally i pieced together that kind of I guess it's sort of a chorus. It's a mantra-like repeating thing that repeats mirror to the sky. I came up with that then and there. I was going to ask you about your lyrical inspiration. I guess that's one mm. one way of getting it, just sort of walking around and, and you hear a line or something. But yeah, uh, is that how stuff comes to you? Just sort of being aware uh, uh, at, at any moment that, that a line might inspire something or does it come from reading yeah. or does it come from, you know, where do you draw these things from? Oh, wh wherever I can get it, I'll take it. And I'm always <laughs> just keeping a watchful eye and looking yeah. for stuff like that. You know, whether it's from a film or a book or something someone says in passing. There's a specific style that fits a, a yes song lyrically, right? I mean, is that just sort of your normal way that... that sort of always synced up with the band and, and the music or, or did you have yeah. to hone that, that lyrical writing style for them? You know what I mean? And that's a really good question. And I've, I've thought about that recently. Um, you know, I was raised on yes music yeah. and I matured as a instrumentalist and vocalist all on, you know, in the school of yes, you might say. So it's a, such a part of me. So the line between such distinction of, is it, you know, something that's my own interest or something that's yes there's sort of one in the same i think yeah that makes sense yeah yeah um but i do know that the lyrics i come up with are you know something i genuinely relate to and straight from my heart yeah i saw uh there was the video that you put out talking about the first single cut from the stars which mm -hmm. also a really great song and and a great open a great introduction to the record for people and i feels like it's gotten a really great response from from fans so far um that one was inspired by your trip to uh you like these parks like the joshua tree stuff like that so talk yes. about that song a little bit yeah growing up my father always instilled and in my brother and i this appreciation for nature and anything regarding nature so uh we lived fairly close to Joshua Tree. I was actually a Boy Scout, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> and we used to do Boy Scout 
trips there and I have wonderful memories of, you know, for the very first time in my life, looking up and seeing a, a perfectly starlit sky without any human interference. And um, something in the music just suggested that. I think uh, generally lyrics follow the music in the yes world of creation. And I think that it's fun and challenging to take the music and try to decipher, decode what story it's trying to convey. You know, instrumental music is raw emotion, but to try and then take that and translate it into a, a literal form can be very challenging, but it's yeah. so enjoyable, that process. So something in the music just suggested that kind of theme and it, it, it came back to me somehow. I remembered those experiences of stargazing. Obviously, um, we, we want to touch base a little bit on uh, about Alan White, who, you know, yeah. everybody knows is, is past. And, um, uh, you know, Jay Shellen is, is on the on the record now and he's been a member uh, touring with you guys for a while. He was on the quest a little bit. Talk a bit about that transition and, and, you know, I know that's been challenging, but also Jay did a great job on the new records and, you know, just working with him and how that sort of transition went along. Yeah, he first came into the picture while I was in the band anyways in 2016 and Alan had fallen really ill. Um, I guess no sooner than, you know, did Chris pass and Alan sort of at the same time getting, beginning his health issues. Yeah. Um, and so he was unable to do a tour in 2016 and Jay came in, you know, as the full-time drummer for that tour, at least one of the tours anyways, I can't remember exactly, but I just love Jay from the moment I met him. And obviously he's such an immense talent, but such a true hearted individual as well. And, um, he's always brought so much support and passion into the project. What was so amazing was his patience in always, uh, being content and supportive of Alan being content and playing that role. I mean, right. Yeah. And just sort of stepping in, you know, doing as much or as little as Alan required. And I always admired him for that because it showed his true intention coming into the project. Um, not so much to prove himself. I mean, everyone wants to do that. That's natural, but just as much as that, he was showing a genuine side of just supporting the music he loves the band he loves and uh he was involved in the quest um there was a time alan's health improved and he was able to do the tracks on the quest but jay did a lot of percussion as well and again played a vital supportive role um you know losing alan was devastating if that goes without saying and uh jay just bravely stepped in and gave everything he could to the new tracks. And I feel like he's provided this beautiful balance of honoring Alan's legacy and style, Absolutely. but also bringing so much originality to it. Yeah, no, and it's, it's obviously it's terrible, but in, in the same way that he was already with the band and, and had played with Alan and sort of just keeps that, family aspect of it going which i think yeah you know makes it really nice and pays tribute you know beautifully i think yeah yeah um you guys have have had well i saw you play i want to was it last year maybe down here in florida and, oh, okay uh amazing is that where you're from then yeah yeah and okay uh, it was just a great great show you guys sounded just awesome um Thanks. you've had you know bits where you've had to cancel runs and, and rescheduled like everyone else with COVID and everything going on, which is I'm yeah, sure been yeah. Just very difficult. Uh, where do things stand now with you guys touring wise and, and what's, what's coming on the horizon or, or, or not, or <laughs> in the planning stages? Yeah, we want to tour as much as we can. We're all focused on that in agreement. And uh, unfortunately Europe again has thrown up some, obstacles that we just can't uh, get around and we're so sorry to all those people out there it's oh, tough. So, it is a challenge yeah, out there now yeah it, it's it's tough um but we're going to try and uh do some uk dates next year and that's looking very promising but of course we have the remainder of the year to look at and 
we'll be doing a big U.S. tour once again. So that'll be great. And we'll have some new Yes music on the horizon for that. No, that's awesome. So you yeah. think uh, you'll, uh, you did play some songs of the quest uh, in the last tour. Um, mm -hmm. You hope to include some of the stuff from the new record, I guess. We do. I mean, let's face it. Let's be realistic and say we're selling nostalgia. You know, we want to give the fans the music they come to hear. And um, that's important to be realistic about that. But having said that, I think that the new music is quite conducive to a yes set. I think we've uh, found on this last tour, it was great. I must tell you, the, the band was so touched by the audience's reactions to the new music, the overwhelming enthusiasm they gave. It was really uh, encouraging. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we'll be doing the same with the new materials. A couple yeah, of selections. It, it, it fit right in. I thought the set list was really cool and interesting. I like that you're throwing in a cool. few, few kind of uh, deeper cuts here and there, which is which yeah. fans like myself always uh, always appreciate. Um, Good. So yeah, I mean it's great. I think uh, you should keep touring as long as uh, as long as it's possible, and and uh, certainly it was a sold out crowd, and people seem to enjoy it. So you know that, that that's great um, yeah great yeah uh what anything else going on with you while while you wait for touring stuff like that do you ever write uh on your own to for like solo stuff or anything like that yeah i do i've got so many bits but i really feel like i need to collect the, a, a band around me to i i write better just in a collective you know, I, I appreciate the process, but there comes a time when I hit a wall and I think I need to bounce these ideas off other people. Sure. I need outside stimuli and creativity from other musicians I trust and respect. And yes, I've been so busy lately that they have filled that void beautifully. And yeah. uh, But we'll see, yeah. I, I would like to, um, if time allows, uh, you know, piecing together a band. It's all also a financial thing. You know, when it's your own thing, you, you're at the head of it. So you're responsible for, well, how do people get paid? Can I afford to do that? <laughs> you know, there's a lot sure. of logistics involved and, and I haven't ever done that Sadly, before. So yeah. there would yeah. be a huge learning curve and yeah, I can just settle in comfortably with, yes, you know, all that's taken care of. And that's a beautiful thing that I'm so grateful for. I really don't look outside of yes much. For that reason <laughs> yeah i bet um is there any uh uh classic yes song that you've always wanted to play that maybe you haven't gotten to do live that that you hope to one day or, or oh. are there sort of favorites out there that, that well you... i'm just yeah i'm just gonna say it because i know it's on the tip of a lot of people's tongues and that's doing um sound chaser and to be over hmm. doing the relayer album <laughs> yeah right <laughs> That's okay. sort of the missing thing for me. I've been blessed doing so much, you know, doing all of going for the one. We've touched on Tormato a lot and even Tales, which is a great blessing. I think um, trying to do the remembering, which is side two of Tales, that would be great too. I want to touch on the things that I haven't been able to yet. Sure. Um, yeah. So yeah, actually uh, thinking about it, you have gotten a chance to do a lot through these album uh, tours. Uh, it's great. Yeah. Even cool. priest. Yeah. Even pre Steve Howe stuff. Yeah. So yeah, that's very it's cool. been fun. Yeah. Uh, well, man, I wish you a lot of success with the record. I think uh, I, I know people are going to love this one. It's uh, it's just really cool. A, a, a real sort of classic. Yes. Prog record. Uh, Mirror to the Sky comes out May 19th. The single cut from the stars is out now. Uh, look, looking forward to more dates and, and things down the line. Um, and John, always a pleasure to talk to you, man. Appreciate you uh, coming on. It's been great, Roy. Great to talk to you and to see you. And I hope to meet you at a show sometime real soon. Ab absolutely. We'll make that happen. All right, buddy. I'll talk to you soon. Okay. Thank you. All right. Bye. <laughs>